Well, thank you very much, Stephanie, for that lovely introduction. And thanks to the museum for having me here tonight. And to my two collaborators who are going to be performing later, uh, Jordan Dykstra and Danielle Ross. And for all of you for making the time to be here. Really appreciate that. So for those of you who are familiar with this Artist Talk series, you might have found yourself here last fall in front of this very piece when Linda Austin talked about Dwayne was here. He was here. Great. So when she talked about uh, Seven Objects 1969. But tonight, as Dwayne noted, I'm going to get very specific. I'm only going to talk about Bruce Nauman's record, 1969. So, uh, you probably remember that when Linda was here, she talked briefly about uh, this record, focused more attention on the Eva Hesse piece, and she described it as being the piece most related to the body. I actually think that that's not true. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, Bruce Nauman's connection to the body and the contemporary sort of dance trajectory and his relationships to that uh, during my talk. So, I partly chose this record out of frustration and also out of affinity for the work and for Bruce Nauman. The frustration comes in the fact that this is an object that to be experienced, you actually have to hear it. You need to listen to this piece and it's being held captive here in a way that doesn't allow you to do that. And so tonight, what we're gonna be able to do is hear the interpretation of two artists, uh, Danielle and Jordan, who will be each interpreting a track off of the record. So just a little bit of background about this record. Like most records, it has two sides. On the first side, side A, the track number one is called Soundtrack for First Violin Film slash Playing All Four Strings on the Violin. And the runtime on that is about 10 minutes long. And then the second track on side A is Violin Problem Number Two slash Playing Two Notes Very Close Together. And that runs about four minutes. Then side B, the entirety of side B, is rhythmic stamping slash four rhythms in preparation for video, uh, videotape problems. And that's about 19 minutes, almost 20 minutes in length. The record's an edition of 100, and it's published by Tanglewood Press. And the cover is a silk screen, both sides of two stills from a video from 1968 called Video Tape Stamping in the Studio. So the violin pieces were two in a series of violin pieces that uh, Nauman did in the late 60s with a violin that he purchased for $15. He started to use it to set up a particular set of problems for himself, where it didn't matter if he knew how to play the violin or not. Uh, while Nauman was trained in a variety of musical instruments, he never learned how to play the violin. One of the problems that he set up was a wordplay that I particularly enjoyed, in which he tuned the four strings of the violin to D, E, A, D before playing it. Another problem was walking around the studio playing one note on the violin. And the one that you're going to hear tonight, as interpreted by Jordan on the viola, is off of side A, which is the track titled Soundtrack for First Film Violin uh, Piece, playing all four strings on the violin. So for this piece, Nauman played the violin for as long as he physically could, which was about 10 minutes. I think it was particularly challenging for him as someone not trained in, in performance, but I think it's also just probably physically exhausting to play the way that he does, which you'll hear tonight uh, via Jordan. So the second performance this evening is going to be Danielle Ross's interpretation of Side B, the rhythmic stamping piece. So similarly to the violin piece, this is also connected with an idea of body awareness. In 1968, Bruce Nauman met Meredith Monk and had some of his first conversations around this idea. He was also aware of Anna Halpern's work and was in conversation with folks like Merce Cunningham. Uh, he did this piece 
with the sort of thinking that he was setting up dance problems for himself without being a dancer. And he was one of the first people to start working with the body as a material. And so that was particularly interesting. In his teaching, he didn't want to set up still life like drawing sessions with live models because he felt like everyone has a body, so why not use the body itself as a material instead of just drawing someone else's body. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the affinity now. That was my frustration with not being able to hear the piece. Uh, I feel really connected to Bruce Nauman's work. I love his use of language. Any of you who've seen my art collection probably realize that almost every single piece I own is text-based. Uh, I like his interest in the role of the artist in society, but above all, I love his connection to music. I feel very similar to Nauman when he said that music plays a large part in my work even when there is no music. Nauman even considered uh, majoring in music in college instead of art. I too used to play uh, music and considered while in college whether I should invest time in, in playing in rock bands and drop out of school and travel across the country, which I didn't. I, I stayed in the art game and I think that that was it was maybe an okay decision. <laughs> but even though I, did not, I didn't leave music behind at all, I think that everything I do is actually still very much rooted to the very foundational experiences of playing in bands during my formative years. So another quote that I like uh, that Nauman gave to uh, curator Joan Simon about the influence uh, that music plays in his work is that he, really admired jazz pianist uh, Lenny Tristano. And he said, quote, from the beginning I was trying to see if I could make art like that. Art that was just all there at once, like getting hit in the face with a baseball bat. Or better yet, like getting hit in the back of the neck. You never see it coming. Uh, and since this music is something that's so important to Nauman, and it's really what he was striving for in a lot of the work that he did and still does today, I would like to take five minutes out to listen to a piece by, by Lenny. So, I'm gonna get that started. It's a live performance and um, there are about three rounds of awkward applause as he gets seated.
when my own work doesn't revolve around music, it really looks at the artist's social role. And while it doesn't seem like it's that evident in Bruce Nauman's work, I think that where those sorts of ideas started to seep into his thinking was when he was an undergraduate student at the University of Wisconsin, in which most of the professors in that department at the time were all former WPA artists who believed that art had a function beyond beauty and that it served a social role. And uh, while Nauman never made any work that was directly about uh, having a social impact, Joseph Beuys, uh, the, jo uh, the German artist who could be seen as the grandfather of socially engaged art, and uh, came up with the term social sculpture in an interview he did in 1969, he said that Bruce Nauman was the American artist that he felt the most affinity to. And while it is an unlikely seeming inspiration for the work that I do, I feel the same way about Nauman today. So I'm gonna hand things over now to Jordan, and he's gonna be performing just around the corner, and then immediately following that will be Danielle, and then the three of us will be available for any kinds of questions, probably more casually during the happy hour. So thank you.